And welcome to The One Show with Alex Jones. And Matt Baker. Now, our guest tonight has belted out some of rock's most memorable songs of all time. Undoubtedly. There was, of course, the legendary Bat Out of Hell, I Would Do Anything for Love. But I won't do that. No, right, fair enough. And, uh, of course, there was the uh, there was a third one as well, but uh, it's... Uh... Well, two out of three ain't bad, Matt. <laughs> it's good. Meatloaf. It's Meatloaf. <laughs> Go on, mate. You know, you took the words right out of hey! me. Brilliant. I Absolutely. can't get off for crying out loud. <laughs> can't you get it right? Okay, so anyway. It's nice to see you, mate. <laughs> nice to see you, too. And you, you both look, he, he's in his jumper, or as there they say are. in America, sweater. <laughs> I'm not really sure why they call it sweater. I prefer the term jumper myself. There we are. And you're coexisting. Yes. This just jacket, thank you for helping me remember that, because I'm a little, my brain's a little mush. I, I made this jacket for the album. It's called Coexist. It's yeah. looking great, mate. Nice. It really it's very is. Very sparkly. Now, last night was. And the kids of... will like it too. Yeah, Look, they will. Yeah, yeah. There you go. I'm sparkly. And speaking of glitz and glamour, it was the Oscars last night. And there's a lot of controversy, of course, about what happened um, when Sasha Baron Cohen came down the red carpet. He was dressed as his new film character. There he is, the dictator. And he spilled these ashes on Ryan Seacrest. I don't know whether you've seen this. Wait a minute, we need to clean this up. Now if somebody, it's fine, it's okay for you. Now if somebody asks you what you are wearing, you will say, come to jail. Have fun this evening. <laughs> well, there's got to be a place for putting on the right knowing, knowing Ryan Seacrest, I am sure he was not happy with that. No. no. I don't believe he was happy. He did look very bothered that his suit was uh, completely he, dusty. Uh, 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 knowing Ryan, no, no that well. didn't go over big with Ryan. Right. He's okay. still brushing it off the talcum powder, I'm sure. And I, but I, I thought they were, they were, they were originally, when I left, they were saying that they weren't going to allow him to come to Sasha. the Oscars. Sasha. Yeah. To the Oscars. If he wanted to come, he couldn't come dressed as the dictator. That's the name of his next film. Yes. I guess it, they had to give in to it, and then once he did that with Ryan, I guess he didn't get seated, no. so... Well, it was funny. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> lots of, uh, but lots got, of famous people what, got he, to... He got a lot more promo out of well, that than yeah, he would have come he dressed did. in a tuxedo. He did, yeah. indeed, and did. Mate, lots of famous people got the chance to thank their Berman. Well done, Nikki from the Chippy. Wasn't that great? <laughs> mate, Good. Uh, why do you think she got upset at the, at the fiddle player for I don't know. Maybe she just didn't like not fiddles. Keen on fiddles. I, think, I think they play them off on stage, mate. I think they play them off. But anyway, I'm, we were thinking about what would be the first award that you ever got. Can you remember it? Yeah, Is it I, a swimming I, award. It was an or award or? for uh, football. Football. And it was presented to me by a quarterback that played for the Dallas Cowboys by the name of Don Meredith, yeah. who eventually went on to be one of the Monday Night Football uh, uh, sportscasters with Howard Cosell, Don Meredith, and Frank Gifford. There you went go. right over your head. But anyway, um, <laughs> uh, he gave me the first award, which was a football award, and uh, the only person I thanked was him for handing it to me. <laughs> Thank you, Don, very much, and I left. Well, that was go. it. Short Lovely. and snappy, see? Right. Yeah. Now, um, we, right to the point. Yeah, right to the point. We do like a powerful rock song, Matt. I mean, anything you can power grab to, we love, and you're the king of writing those songs. Mm. So what would you say are the key ingredients, then, to writing a good, powerful rock song? Uh, um, well, you have to uh, believe in what you're writing about. You have to commit to it completely. Mm -hmm. And you, you have to believe it. In other words, you can't just sit here and figure out, okay, I'm, I'm writing the word sun. What rhymes with sun? Mm -hmm. mm, okay. And, and just try to rhyme words. Okay. You, they, they have to come. They have to flow. They have to be passionate. And they have to come from your heart. And, and you, too, many, too many writers go to the thesaurus or the rhyming dictionary and try to find a rhyme, you know. Oh, here's a good rhyme. Let's put that in the song. Yeah. And yeah. uh, that, that never worked. Well, there are lots of examples of these passionate songs, as you were talking about, on your new album, Hell in a Handbasket. Uh, before we talk about it, let's listen to one of the singles, which is Stand in the Storm. Here we are. You know I'm gonna stay with you.
track after track of really, really good ones. I like that's all a, of that, them. That's one of the new ones, and I, that's from the, uh, that was in a video we did in Sydney, Australia. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm making myself crazy by watching it going, why don't you turn and look at the audience? <laughs> I, because it was the, really the third time we'd ever done the song. So I'm just sitting here watching Patty to make sure I have the words right. And I'm watching her mouth, and I'm going, okay, yeah, okay, I got it, I got it. Okay, and finally, at the end, I do turn and look at the audience, which I finally go, okay, good. Brilliant. But Stand in the Storm is a great, and Little John yeah. comes in, and uh, right after that, with a hip-hop, uh, I combined uh, rock with country with hip-hop, which nobody else has ever done before. And, and why did you call it Helen Handbasket? Well, I, because the last six or seven years, I've said the world is going to hell in a handbasket because it's all about me, 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 and everybody wants a handout, and nobody wants to work, and everybody wants something for free, mm -hmm. and, and it's uh, that we've lost our humanity, we've lost our compassion mm -hmm. for, mm -hmm. uh, for people, um, and, and, and the Internet has 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 bred it happened today in america with a school shooting and i really believe that's that's from the internet the internet has bred this hatred um uh, from people and because people can hide behind ooh golly gee and write yeah, the most yeah. terrible things in the world and it just it it just it's causes definitely people coming people angst and yeah, it yeah. just and it builds up until people explode and do things they shouldn't do. Okay. And it and and it's wrong. The world. Nobody's telling us the truth. Yeah. yeah. And and it's and definitely this, coming from the heart. This one. Then. Yeah. This, this yeah. album is yeah. the first album that I've done through my eyes. Well, I tell you what, Meet, we loved it, didn't we? Especially the first track. Yeah. yeah. Definitely. Well, all that's of me is really. Yeah. Uh, I'm it's really. It's all of you. That's a confessional. Yeah. Yeah. It's that's like good. I'm gone to the priest and said, "Dude, here I am." Mm -hmm. <laughs> there you go. Well, it is a great re uh, listen, so thank you. And so I'm glad you like it because yeah. I like it as well. Good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, on we go. A good head take. So it's her, didn't hey, it? Hey. It's Educating Essex, Mr. Drew. Mr. Drew, welcome to the show. Thank you. Mr. Drew, Brilliant. Meet, meet Mr. Drew. Uh, they, that wasn't bad. That was straight ahead. That was like, you, no, you didn't yell at her. You weren't scolding her. You were just talking to her straight yeah. ahead. But I, I hear you want to be a what they call a principal or a, what do they say, a head, a teacher. head teacher. Okay, so I'm going to ask you a few questions to see if you qualify, okay? All right. Interview by Meatloaf. That's Here right. Here we go. This is it. <laughs> we don't mess about on the one show, Mr. Drew. How would you describe your style of discipline? Clear, simple, straightforward and fair. I agree with you 100%. Excellent. Okay, now, the most trouble that I ever got into in school was I was caught in the parking lot in my 1958 Buick, making out with my girlfriend, mm -hmm. how would you have dealt with me? I would see that as something really that your parents needed to deal with. <laughs> so I think we might well leave you in the car, call your parents, your parents come in, and we'll see whether or not your parents want you to come in and have a little chat with you through the window. Yes, but I want you to know I was voted best kisser in the seventh grade. <laughs> <laughs> OK, why haven't you applied for the head teacher's job earlier? Because I think you can only apply when you feel you are ready and your experience is there. And for me, that's this year. That, this is the first time you felt ready? Yeah, this is the I first time. I seem pretty good in that clip there. Okay, what qualities do you have that will make you a great head teacher? I think that I'm calm, I think that I'm patient, I think I'm clear, I'm forward looking, and I think I understand what people need and I believe in high standards. Okay, hell in a handbasket comes out today. Are you going to buy it? Without a shadow of a doubt. Mr. Drew, everyone. Absolutely. Right, one more. Oh, we've got one more. School, right, uniforms. Here we go. School uniforms, yes or no? Yes. 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 Did he do okay, well, they should be the girls' short shorts, halter oh, no. tops. Uh, the boys' uh, gym shorts with muscle shirts, unless you look like me. And in that case, armor. There okay. You go. <laughs> That's for all the over 18s. I think I think I'll be I'll, I'll be getting the job ahead of you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Drew, you did so well. But on a serious note, yes. what do you think then is the turner for people that puts them off wanting to be a head teacher? I think that many people who are in my position as a deputy head have wanted to probably be a head teacher all the way through their career, and they reach where I am, and they look at their head teacher, and maybe their head teacher looks tired. Maybe their head teacher seems to be working very very hard all the time, and they just reach a stop. 
and they reach a block. There are lots of people who desperately want to be a head teacher, but there are some people who maybe think it's just a step too far. Yeah. They see so much in the news, they see so much from the government saying head teachers aren't doing a great job, and they feel talked down. So, how do you enthuse people then, Mr. Drew? What's the answer? I think you enthuse people who want to be a head teacher by saying you know why you came into teaching, you know you can make a difference. There are yeah. great head teachers out there. You need to look at those people, be inspired by those people. Look at what the National College are doing to train people to be the next generation of head teachers and actually believe in what you want to do and know, you know, this is the job I want to do. I'm going to make a difference for young people and I'm going to feel inspired to do it. And whatever is being said out there by people who perhaps don't fully understand education, talking schools down, not being so positive about it, I'm going to cut past that. I believe I want to. Do it. I'm a passionate advocate for young people and Good I am nice, going yeah. out there to do it. Oh, yes! Great! Yes! There's a song in there, mate. There's a song in there. Definitely. My mother was a teacher. Yeah. And my mother would have agreed with you 100%. Teachers, teachers are the most important people in the world because they're the ones who educate the young. Yeah. And that's what we need right now is better Indeed. education. Indeed. Yes. Thanks, yes. mate. Thanks, Mr. Drew. Good luck. Thank you. Give me five. Good future. Baby. Yes. There's the next head teacher I've ever seen one. Brilliant. Now that She's uh, sat there, haven't you, with a beautiful landscape in front of her. Oh. Beatrix Potter there, you know, penning away. Children's stories are unbelievable. Yeah. My uh, my favorite children's uh, story. I love Peter Rabbit. Yeah. But was was the little train that could. Oh, oh, is that you know an American? That, you know that? The little train that could. The little train that could. Oh, okay. Uh, I haven't the, read that. Oh, no, he, <laughs> couldn't, he couldn't get up the hill. In other words, he kept saying, I can't get up the hill, I can't get up the hill. And his father, the father train, kept going, Yes, you can. If you try hard enough, you can get up that hill. Yeah. And the little train kept going and trying and trying and trying and trying. And finally, he got to the top of the hill. Oh. Yes. So it's the little train that could. Mate, I'm sure any children who sat and just heard that will go up the apples and pears now and tuck themselves in over. Little, little train that could. It's Absolutely. a great moral. You yeah. Know? You can do anything that you set your mind to. Yes, that's right. Now, when you're setting your mind to write in a new song, where do you like to do it then? Is there a special place you go to write? Yep, I send all the people that are going to write, because the first thing I do is gather the people together mm -hmm. and I tell them, okay, this is the idea for the song and you guys go away and work on it because if I sit in the room with you, I won't record it. So I wait for people to get about, oh, halfway, three quarters through and then I'll go in and I'll change it all, and then I can record it. <laughs> but but I, can't, I, can't, I can't be in the room. Every time I'm in the room with writers when they start a song, I will never record it. Mm. The only exception to that, I wrote with a, a, an, an English friend of mine named John Parr, and we wrote a couple of songs, and we wrote a song called Magical together, mm -hmm. and I actually sat in the room with John, and we wrote Magical, and uh, it was um, number 14 in the charts in America, so... Mate, you have this incredible energy on stage, you know. It's because, I mean, your songs, obviously, the massive productions. There's a wonderful instrumental, the lyrics, the whole kit and Well, they're all pictures. But, they're yeah. pictures. But where do you keep you're finding this energy from? Because you, you suffer badly from asthma, don't you? you is it right you've got oxygen at the side of the stage? I'm asthmatic. Mm -hmm. I've been an asthmatic since I was a child, so I, I have that for... I passed... I, I, I had... A, asthma so bad in Pittsburgh that we got into a song called Los Angeles Loser from the last album and I just fainted just and they're all there and, and they bringing me oxygen and and I when I wake up I say I say what what song where are we in this yeah. song what song are we going to and they said well you don't worry about that we got to get off the stage and I'm going nowhere what song are we supposed to go to next and they said we're going to took the words I said okay start it and they're going no you got to get off the stage I'm going no start the song I got up I got up I it wasn't the greatest vocal in the world I can tell you that because I was kind of like whoa dude yeah but then we we finished the show and the shows my show is about two hours and 20 minutes long well, professional till the end I bet you the audience were thanking you for that and we I was the asking, little train that could yes you were me and we have been thanking uh, asking all of you out there to th uh, send yeah. in your uh, thank yous and here we go uh, do you want to start us off actually yeah, make you got, start us off okay you have one. Oh yeah I love I love this one this is, uh, they're the thank yous, right? Yeah, yep. okay. that's right. Okay, and this is from Amy, and Amy says, thanks to my cat, Dudley, for being so cuddly. Hey, good rhyme there. Oh. 
Good. Uh, uh, this Amy. one's nice. This is from Charlotte, uh, and she would like to thank her sister, the one in the hat, as a sister, uh, for being such a brilliant sister all the time. What a lovely picture. This one is quite simple. Steve, thanks from Sue for laying the floor. <laughs> there <laughs> we go. Practical. <laughs> well, thanks so much, Meatloaf. Uh, your new album is, of course, out today. It yes. is. Thanks ever so much and for coming tomorrow. What? What's it called? Hell in a handbag. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> tomorrow, Lord Andrew Lloyd Webber will be here. We'll see you at seven. Bye bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>